Okay, so it's 6.05, so I'm gonna get started. Um, mentors and Daniel, if anyone comes into the waiting room, can we let them in? I'm probably not gonna be looking at that while I'm talking. So, welcome guys. My name is Ricky Kumar. I'm the president and founder of Irvine STEM Sesh. We're a nonprofit organization that aims towards increasing the accessibility and quality of STEM education in the United States, specifically SoCal for this project right here. So let's get into it. So this is our agenda for today. We're gonna to talk about STEM Sesh for a bit, then go into what the mentorship program is. So the uh, workshops that we're talking about today, and then the specifics on each workshop, and then a couple of FAQs that you usually receive. So for the introduction, STEM Sesh was originally an in-person event before COVID. Uh, it was formulated around September of, or actually around July of 2019. And we were supposed to be an event in the Northwood gym where we basically provided and showcased a bunch of science demonstrations such as elephant toothpaste, a couple of forensics activities, hovercrafts, things like that, just the ways that you can visualize STEM and see it in action. However, due to COVID, uh, the event got canceled. So we transformed the actual thing into an online platform, which students can use to actually, you know, independently go and see what other things are happening in the STEM field and how basically what they learn in school is applied in the real world. Uh, last summer, we did the first version of Delta, uh, Delta Project. Uh, some of you may have participated in it. Uh, it was our pilot version. We we're just trying out the workshops. It ended up being a pretty big success. We had about 50 students from three different states. And uh, at the end, we got pretty good feedback with a lot of positive uh, results. And for this version of Delta Project, we we're basically building off of what we did last year and you know, learning off of, basing it off of the feedback that all of the parents and students provided. So yeah. For STEM sessions as a whole, our website has received 25,000 viewers, over 25,000 viewers. And we've got users from uh, six out of seven continents, so except for Antarctica. And that's 29 countries and 30 states in the US. So let's go in. STEM sesh specifically, our mission statement has three parts. The first part is involved with the future of STEM education. So we just wanna make sure that STEM education right now is more focused on textbook learning and memorizing more concepts, uh, whereas it should actually be more application-based where you understand how what you learn in school is actually seen in the real world. Uh, so that's what we focus on as an organization as a whole. And then the two specific parts of STEM sesh is uh, enhancing the quality of STEM education and enhancing the accessibility of STEM education. So Delta Project focuses on enhancing the quality of STEM education since we provide uh, pretty high level workshops for middle schoolers and elementary schoolers. And they mostly focus on application-based phenomena. So instead of basically giving you a bunch of things to memorize, we're instead giving you this one overarching phenomena, which I'll talk about later. And then students will basically have to use what they learn to explain what's happening in the real world. Accessibility of STEM education is more focused on making sure that people, everyone has access to high quality STEM education. And the Delta Project does do some part of this, but we have a separate initiative that's going on that the Delta Project helps support that actually improves this, which I'll talk about later in the presentation as well. So before I go into the actual specifics of uh, the workshops, I just wanna say, that if you guys have questions or any types of concerns as throughout the presentation, you guys can send them in the chat or unmute. Uh, don't wait till the end, just do it whenever you can. And uh, you can send it to everyone or private chat them to me, and then I'll probably answer them right away. So yeah. So for our workshops, we focus on one major principle, which is the difference between understanding and memorizing. So the format that we created was something called pseudo phenomena based learning. 
Uh, and basically what this does is it allows students to draw connections between concepts rather than memorizing random facts. And this is actually based off of Northwood High School's integrated science program. Uh, but it's more, it's more guided compared to what they do in high school. It's more focused, more mentor led so that students actually have an idea of what's happening. Uh, an example of this will be more clear once we talk about the workshop specifically. So basically what happens is in the first half of the workshops, mentors will provide students with a bunch of background information on the specific subject and topic. And then the second half, what students will have to do is apply what they've just learned into basically the overarching phenomena. So if with the overarching phenomena for, for a workshop was how do, tree, how do trees grow? Basically in the first half of the workshop, the mentor would give the students background information on the anatomy of trees, the parts that contribute to its growth and other parts like that. And the second half, students have to explain themselves how say a sequoia tree intends to be one of the tallest trees in the world. So that's the overview of how the structure is. Our format is, this is this was one of the things that was uh, part of our feedback last year. Last year, we ran things on Google Classroom and Google Meets, but there was a bunch of technical issues with that. So we switched it to Canvas and Zoom. Canvas is going to be pretty helpful. If you guys are current elementary schoolers, you know, if you haven't used Canvas yet, you're definitely going to use it in middle school and high school. The way we format our Canvas is the way high school teachers do it, which is also gives you a good um, introduction to how it's going to be in the future. And we have two classes per week for a three-week period. So that's a total of six classes. So I wanted to actually talk about how the Canvas is structured. Uh, if you want to, if you want to follow along, I've pasted the link to the template Canvas page uh, for the workshops, but I'm also going to walk you guys through what the Canvas actually looks like. So. going to share the screen. And I created an email, a normal Gmail account, and basically invited myself to this Canvas course called Template. I'm going to accept. I'm going to create an account on Canvas. The email is the same thing that I got emailed to. And then write a password in. Pacific agree, register. And now this takes you to the actual Canvas page that we use. So this is a template. This is not an example of a mentor of a mentor's Canvas page. It's just a general overview of how this, uh, how the workshops are structured. Uh, so this is the home page, and you'll see that we've got a bunch of uh, images here that lead to different links. So you can go to an announcement, and you can see this is a test announcement where your mentors would basically send updates for each class. Resources takes you to all the assignments that are uh, due for the um, workshop. You can also contact us. Yeah, that, that link should lead to a contact page. So it's this information right here. This is how you contact us. And then the last one is the module. So this is the part that's more geared. This is the part that's structured like a high school classroom where the modules each have, each are separated by week and chapter. So this is basically how it's set up. Week one, you do a separate unit. Week two, you do another unit. And week three, you do another unit. And then each week you have two chapters. And basically you're given all this, all this information at the beginning of the workshop. So you can see, go, go ahead as much as you want. But your mentors have uh, formatted this in a way that each link that you go down is going to be the right, is going to be the way you, is going to be the order that you um, cover the material in the workshop. So if we go to our learning objectives, this is an example of what it looked like. We'd have a title of the workshop, a summary of what the objective looks like, and then over what it is. Uh, the actual information of this can actually be found on our workshops page. So if you go to stemsearch.org slash workshops, .php and you click on any 
workshop here. If you click on the workshop, it takes you to, so let's say we click on a workshop, it takes you to this pop-up and you can view the syllabus. And this syllabus basically shows you each week what's, what you're gonna cover. So the, in the learning objectives, that's basically what you're gonna cover. This information right here, like the week one DNA building blocks of life. Over here, it's say DNA building blocks of life. So that's basically what's gonna, that's basically how the canvas is structured. I wanted to show this because I had a couple of questions in the RSVP form that showed how we're gonna structure the, what, structure the workshops. So yeah, I thought that would be something helpful to show. I'm gonna stop share. I'm gonna go back to the other presentation. So back to this presentation. We just had the canvas. Are there any questions at this point that you may have? No? Okay. Right. So now I do want to address the registration fee. We do have a $10 registration fee per student. And those $10 are basically go to the part that I was talking about. So if you remember, I talked about the accessibility of STEM education. That's one also. That's also a mission of STEM Sesh. Uh, basically, what the all the profits that we receive from this workshop go to two things. The first one is resources for each workshop. Some mentors may have some software that you need to use that costs some money, or uh, it's just a couple of resources that may, may need to be purchased. Uh, the second one is our Gnosis project. So basically what that does is focuses on the accessibility of STEM education. So we're partnered with a couple of homeless shelters. The main one right now is gonna be Stand Up For Kids OC. And what we're doing is we're providing a bunch of resources and technological resources that increase the accessibility of STEM education to homeless youth to end the cycle of homelessness in youth in SoCal. So basically what we do is this, these funds directly go to purchasing Wi-Fi boosters uh, that are donated to uh, Standard for Kids OC. And those donation, those Wi-Fi boosters essentially make the Wi-Fi signal and the homeless shelters accessible across the entire shelter so that wherever the student may be, they have access to stable Wi-Fi and internet. And basically this makes the ease of learning online, especially during the uh, distance learning caused by the pandemic, a lot easier and more accessible for these students. Secondly, we also are partnering with Stand Up For Kids OC to help them with their STEM program, where we're providing a bunch of materials so that these uh, homeless students can actually, you know, physically work with scientific materials and do experiments so they understand the physical aspect of science. So that's where the registration fee goes. A majority of it does go there, maybe like a 10th of the registration fee goes to the um, resources. So I got, I got a question, what are the dates and the times of the classes? So the classes start on June 21st and end on July 9th. Uh, each, class has, each class goes two weeks per, uh, two, day, two classes per week. Uh, I'll talk about, I talked about how much they're covered in the next couple of slides, but I can also type a link in here, bit.ly slash sesh schedule. So that, if you go to that link, uh, you'll basically see the schedule that we have for all our classes. Uh, but generally all our classes start at June 21st and end at July 9th. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on to the specifics of our actual workshops. The first one is genetic disorders, uh, sickle cell anemia. Our mentor is Victoria, uh, and this is her information. And the overarching phenomena for this workshop is sickle cell anemia. So this is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, basically what students will do is for the first half of the workshop, they'll understand the science behind the actual uh, subject. So, the subject, subject for this is genetics. So these two weeks will focus more on the genetics science behind it. And then week three students will be able to, uh, will be given the opportunity to actually apply what they learn 
and try to explain how sickle cell anemia happens and what are the effects of it. And these are the dates and times. So it's on Mondays, four to five, and Thursdays, four to five. The second one is the science behind sourness. Caitlin is our mentor for this. And the subsubject is uh, biochemistry and the overarching phenomena is biochemistry with acidity and taste. And if you see, it's the same structure. The first half of the workshops focus on the chem and partly on the anatomy of how um, we taste things and then what make up sour, the chemicals involved in sour foods. And then week three students get the opportunity to actually connect them. So how do, uh, how can taste buds basically sense um, the, as the actual chemicals in sour foods? And that basically happens for all our workshops. The dates for these are Tuesdays four to five and Fridays one to two. Uh, the, our third one is the leading cause of death. Uh, and it focuses on our mentor for the Aditya. And it focuses on physiology. And the main thing is heart attacks. Our overarching phenomenon is heart attacks. One thing I did want to talk about here that I got questions on in the RSVP was um, this workshop focuses on physiology. There's a difference between a couple of questions I got was, was, was this workshop focused more on anatomy? or you know, just in general, what is physiology? So to clear that up, uh, anatomy is the actual like structures in the body. So an anatomy of the heart would be, an anatomical principle of the heart would be maybe the chambers of the heart, but the physiology is actually how it works. So uh, in a physiology class, you might find something that's like, how do the chambers of the heart and the pumping patterns contribute to keeping a person alive? So the physiology actually focuses on the mechanisms of the heart attacks and how they basically create the, um, how, how it basically, what causes it and what can be done to prevent it. So the same the structure, week one, and we talk about the anatomy, week two, heart conditions, and week three, students are able to put it together and see what can be done to prevent heart attacks and uh, potential treatments. And days and times are Tuesdays, 10 to 11, in the morning and Thursdays 10 to 11 in the morning. And our fourth workshop is the future of the medical world. Our mentor is Samay. And the subsection of this is biotechnology and the overarching phenomena is repairing the human body with stem cell therapy. And this is one of, this is one of the more, uh, this is one of the examples of how stem cell focuses also on the future of STEM because stem cell therapy is a relatively novel treatment right now. Uh, for those of you who don't know, like basically all our cells are specialized, right? Our skin cells are different than the cells in our cheeks. But all, all of those start off as stem cells and stem cells are unspecialized cells in the body that can basically grow to be whatever, basically develop to be whatever cell it needs to be in the, uh, in the body, like basically what it's programmed for. So what this workshop does is it provides the background on what that is, and it also focuses on how that can, uh, basically it can also focus on how that can be applied to um, curing diseases and stuff like that. And yeah, Daniel mentioned in the chat that you don't need to focus on writing this down. All this information is on our workshops page, and you can also email us. Uh, this, this meeting was, many people requested a meeting just so I can uh, interact one-on-one. -on -one and talk. So yeah, this is all that we're covering based off of questions. Some times for this Monday 10 to 11 and Wednesday 10 to 11. So our fifth one is mapping the human brain. Our mentor for this is Amir. And this deals with neuroanatomy, which is basically the structure and parts of the brain. And we're focusing on the human connectome project. This is also another example of uh, innovate, innovation in STEM. So the first half talks about more of the science behind the brain, and then the second half focuses more on uh, how, how uh, human brain mapping can actually help understand certain diseases and cure them. Days and times, Wednesdays four to five and Fridays four to five. The evolution of computing is our sixth workshop. And the mentor for this Isha, 
The subject is computer architecture and the overarching phenomena is how have computers changed over the course of time. And week one, we talk week one, we talk about you know the basics of computers, dive a bit more deeper in week two, and then week three, students are able to apply them and understand how computing works and the future of the field and you know how it can be applied. Timings are Mondays one to two and Tuesdays one to two. So one pattern that you guys are probably noticing throughout is you know, first two weeks more on the science and basics in the subject, and the second half is more on application based, which is what we tend to go for in these workshops. Uh, our seventh workshop is Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's in, uh, among genders. Our mentor for this is Samridi. And it falls under neuroscience and psychology. Now, this workshop is actually pretty cool because when you think about science, you usually learn about it in separate places, right? You have a separate biology class, you have a separate chemistry class, you have a separate physics class. But in reality, everything that we do in STEM uh, is all connected in some way, right? People say that, like a, a lot of chem teachers say that chemistry is just applied physics, you know, bio is just applied biochemistry. So they're all connected. And this is one really good example of how two different subjects can be connected. So let's talk about neuroscience and psychology and the overarching phenomenon is Alzheimer's. And week one talks about the more about the science. Week two talks more about how uh, differences in gender can affect the effect of, can affect how Alzheimer's uh, has different effects on different people. And then week three, students are able to apply that and understand how the implications of the different effects and the variations can result in uh, social changes and social perceptions of the disease. Times for this are uh, Tuesdays one to two and Thursdays one to two. So those are our workshops. Are there any questions on that? No? Okay. So just a reminder, all this information is on the, um, is on our website. And if you do have questions, you can always email us. So yeah. I'm gonna go into a couple of FAQs that we received last year and a couple from the RSVP that I can uh, address in the presentation right now. So the first one is what are the requirements for each workshop? These are the four basic requirements, just stable internet, uh, a microphone for the Zoom and an access to an email so you can create an account on the Canvas. And if you if there are any issues with any of these four requirements, you can always contact us and we can make accommodations for that. Second is is parental supervision necessary? So we don't we don't recommend having like a constant parental supervision, but we do suggest that students sit down and talk with their parents about what they're learning. Because one thing that we've always noticed is um, if you're able to explain a topic to someone, that's when you know that you actually fully understand it. So that's why like when you're eating food or just like when you have time, we always encourage students to sit down with someone and try to explain what they're learning. Cause at that point, if they, they, they can know whether they understand the topic well enough and also what parts that they may need help. So yeah. Next one is the benefits in practical life. So most of these workshops, you're probably not gonna like focus on the content until you go into college and focus on grad school stuff. But the actual skills developed in the workshops focus on critical thinking and uh, just understanding, making, being able to make connections, which is something that's heavily emphasized uh, in all levels of education. So that's something, that's a skill that we always try to build in the workshops, uh, being able to make connections between different concepts and understand how they work and how they relate in the real world. So yeah, how many hours between meetings are recommended? So homework should only take about um, one to two hours for each workshop. And the in between meetings, this should actually say in between weeks. So each you'll notice that each uh, workshop has one meeting and then a one day break and then another meeting. So there not, doesn't have to be anything done in that one day break, but uh, between weeks, you should put about one to two hours to understand the content and stuff like that. Uh, what grade levels are the workshops designed for? So the content that we teach are high school and college level content, 
but our mentors are have designed them for a middle school audience. So basically the content stays the same, it's still advanced STEM, but the workload is decreased and the way it's explained and certain concepts are taken out. So it's understandable to a middle school audience. And then once you get this, once if students are able to understand the things that's taught in these workshops, basically they'll be able to apply them in, um, basically they'll be able to apply them in different areas. So yeah, and learn more from it. Uh, background knowledge. So there's no background knowledge necessary. Uh, as I talked about earlier, the first two weeks are supposed to build that background knowledge. And the third week is what you do to actually apply that knowledge. And then can you register for multiple workshops? This one I get a lot. So yeah, you can register for as many workshops as you want. We've already had a couple of people register for those, uh, for a bunch of workshops. One thing I do recommend is not registering for a, like all the workshops. If that's something that you think you can handle, like the student can handle, uh, you're more than welcome to do that. But also the, the average that I would recommend is like registering for three workshops or less, because that way you can actually focus on the content of each workshop and then understand what's being taught uh, and you know spend as much time as you can instead of trying to rush through understanding all the stuff that's taught. But yeah. Uh, are there any online resources that we need to enhance our learning experience? So everything that's taught for the workshops will be presented on the Canvas, but the mentors will provide additional information on uh, if you are interested in like learning more about the topic and uh, doing more after the workshops end. And this is one question I've received a lot. So last year we opened up the workshops to fourth to eighth graders. This year we uh, low, kind of constrained it to sixth to, six to eighth graders. And the reason we did that is because the content that we talk about, the course load is more driven for sixth to eighth graders because that's how much homework they receive. But if a student is in like fifth grade or fourth grade and they think that they can handle the, basically the course load of the workshop, they're more than welcome to apply. We're not putting any restrictions on who can join the workshops. It's just a recommendation to actually understand uh, what's being provided in them. So yeah. Are there any questions on, any other questions from here? No? Okay, so the registration link is bit.ly slash sesh dash register. Uh, I'm actually gonna show you, take you guys to one of the, we've already had a couple of people register. So when you guys also register, you guys should look at sesh dash schedule. So in chat, I'm gonna paste that in here again. And basically what we can do with here, you're given the schedule that I talked about in the meeting. And if you go to the bottom and you go to workshop list, you're also given the amount of seats that are available for each workshop. So the maximum of seats that we offer are 15 per workshop, um, but that can increase. Last year we had uh, 50 people register and we had to increase some seats and add in separate sections for the workshops. So depending on how many people, depending on the demand for each workshop, uh, yeah, you feel free to register as much as you want. But I registered quickly because the seats are filling up pretty quickly, a bit faster than I expected, uh, faster than I expected. We are also probably, based on the trends that we're seeing, we're also probably gonna increase the amount of time, um, increase the amount of workshops available. So you might have section one of a specific workshop and then a different time for the same workshops, just that everyone who wants to register for the workshop are able to have that opportunity. This is the contact information. If you have any questions, this is my email and this is the general workshops email. So if you have any general questions, you can email them there. Uh, yeah, that is all I had. If there are no other questions, actually, are there any questions? You guys can send them in chat. No? 
All right, I'm gonna put my email into the chat and the workshop's email. So if you guys do have any questions, feel free to email that. I will be sending out these slides uh, for the people who missed the meeting uh, in a couple of hours. So you guys can look out for that as well. But yeah, other than that, that's all I had. If there are no other questions, you guys are free to go. I look forward to seeing all of you in the summer. So yeah, bye guys.